We want to call to order the DA drainage district number one uh, Board of Commissioners meeting. Uh, this is June the 8th, 2015. And with that, we'll give our indicate invocation in the pledge. Dear Lord, we want to thank you for all the good things you've given us at, uh, in Ascension Parish. Uh, thanks, uh, very much thankful for the, the good summer weather that we've been having, having after these uh, trials over the winter with the rain and everything. We'd like to ask you to help and assist our people in North Louisiana along the Red River in their time of need and their situation and, and flooding uh, right now. We'd like to also ask that you allow us to make good decisions and everyone go home uh, safely tonight. Uh, we'd also like to give our thoughts and prayers for uh, uh, Councilman Denny Johnson's wife uh, who had uh, lost her uh, uncle. We ask all this in your name. Amen. Amen. Congratulations to the choir of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Shakes. I apologize for being late. Chairman, if you uh, so wish, I have a, uh, an addition request to the agenda, Councilman Melanson. Uh, it's a, we need to move to add it to the agenda. Uh, move request for proposals for preliminary engineering, for RFQs for preliminary engineering for flood control uh, structure at the weir at, at New River. I second. You want me to? Yeah, go ahead. There's a motion to by Mr. Malonson to add that to the agenda. Uh, I second. Uh, Mr. Lambert has seconded. Any uh, objection? Roll call. Councilman Shakesana? Yes. Councilman Turner? Yes. Councilman Satterley? Yes. Councilman Kluwat? Sorry, not here. Councilman Lohr? Yes. Councilman, Councilwoman Casso? Yes. Councilman Todd Lambert? Yes. Councilman Malasso? Yes. Okay. With no objection, we will put that on the agenda and it will be uh, as 5A after the uh, chairman's report. And with that, we will turn the chair back over to Councilman Lambert. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Vice Chair, oh, I think we're all day. here now. It's a bad traffic day. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Yes, indeed. We'll move on to we'll move on to number four, the acceptance of the minutes of May 4th uh, meeting. Motion. Moved by Mr. Stewart. Second. Second by Mr. Sadley. Discussion? Not motion passed. We have no chairman's report. We'll move on to 5A. Mr. Uh, Melanson, uh, please. Um, yeah, I've been having some discussions. I know I've talked to quite a few of y'all up here and, and also with, uh, with Mr. Rue and, and with uh, Ms. Jackie Bowman with the city. and. The mayor, some of those guys. We've had a, a, some issues for a long time with, of course, New River and, and the Goudin tilting in and having some issues with the weir, not, you know, blocking the, the flow right there. Um, and so I, I'd, I'd like to try to do a, a project where we take that weir out. I know we've worked with the city for years trying to get it taken out, and they won't do that. But if we could take it out and put some kind of flood control structure in so when we do get in rain events, we could open it up, be able to get, get some flow through that. Um, I've, I've spoken with... Ms. Bowman, a couple people in the city, they're willing to, to work with us on it. 
And so what I would like to do is try to get a, a RFQ, maybe get uh, you know 30 days, get a get a, an engineering firm and and you know start some preliminary design on that, so we can look at what what the cost would be and um, get that design, so we can continue to work with the city and see what we can do with it. Discussion, Mr. Fuller. Yeah, Mr. Blue. If we opened up that weir, say put a gate to where, and I'm, I'm sure what Brian talked about, he and I talked about, you know, it would it would maintain most of the time and then open up during high water. Would that change anything on a downriver, a new river? Uh, you you're actually looking at two locations. You have to do something at Smith Bayou and at uh, New River uh, behind Walmart. The Whatever, if you're going to put a structure there that you can open up to try to get the silt out, mm -hmm. you're looking at uh, a structure that has to span just about the entire uh, width of the channel. Just putting a flood gate, a simple flood, a sluice type gate that you open up maybe 20 foot wide or something like this will not relieve the silt build up behind it. We looked at it years ago, and the fact is that this, because of that factor, putting a, a structure that spans the whole distance across. Um, it's real expensive if you do a mechanical structure. Uh, if you do some type of uh, stop log type situation where you, you know, have to get out there and physically remove the structure, then it takes a good while to do it. And in a flash flood event, you know, um, it's, not it, it's, it's not really feasible that we found. But what I suggest uh, what we could go with is a minor contract for engineering feasibility and, and the preliminary design, which you probably can get for under 50000 the parish president can sign off on if it's the wishes of the board. And with that, you can kind of get some rough numbers, uh, order of magnitude uh, costs, and a little bit of information on exactly what kind of structure and some kind of uh, information of what, will it, what kind of job will it perform. So my suggestion, you can go ahead and vote for RFQ, uh, but uh, I think that's the way I would go first, is just go with the under $50,000 contract to get some basic information in. Mr. Shakes now. Bill, well that, can we put in there that that would give us some options for design that, and the options and results on the different? Yes, yes, it, it, again, they'll look at the whole situation to give us some, some, like I say, order of magnitude type costs and structures, uh, uh, for the size and the difficulty of putting it in um, and the results of it, you know, how big it really has to be to really uh, perform the function, which is really silt removal uh, more than flood or drainage. It's the <coughs> silt removal part of it. Um, but again, you know, that, that would give us a start. And then we can go, if it looks like it was a, a, a fairly significant project and the board wishes to go further with it, then we'll go for RFQ to go for um, you know major design and, and bidding and the whole thing, and uh, work it out with the city and see how they wish to participate and stuff like that. But at least they get us going, and it gets going in a short uh, short amount of time. Okay. I make a motion. I second. Yeah. Moved by Mr. Malonso, yeah. second by Mr. Lambert. Any uh, further discussion? The option with a timetable. What would the timetable on that? Well, we it depends. Now, that's another question. I, I, uh, I can come back in, in a couple of weeks with a list of uh, um, engineering firms that, that we feel has qualifications to go for it with this uh, type of work, and we can leave it up to, to you to, uh, to choose one, or you can give me the option of the administration choosing one. It really makes no difference. And you come back to us at the next meeting with that? Yeah, we only have a couple of weeks, you know, with uh, one week with some information. Right but, but again, if you give us the, the administration authority to, to go on forward with the engineering firm, I mean, we we What's capable yeah. of doing it. Yeah, Choosing a firm with the uh, the amount of qualifications. So what you're thinking on the and that, that'll give you that'll give you time to get back with the city and the other ones that <laughs> other parties that we're trying to get get through to. So right. that would help you. And are we gonna put a. I think what you're asking, we're going to put a time like on the, like the results. I'd amend that motion mm -hmm. to have, you know, administration do that and, and acquire uh, some, some proposals, design, and, and, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and options, and then to put a six-week uh, time, time yeah. frame for that to report yes. back. I'll second that. 
Yeah, we can do that. The, the, the main thing is a good hydraulics engineer, uh, hydrologist, to look at the a model on it. And that'd be a simple model. It's not a very complicated yeah, model. And we already have some models on that. Just to see if you open it up with this type of system, is it a benefit? I think. Then if it is, you go to the next step. I think we've had preliminary models or some full mm -hmm. models of this on a number of occasions yeah, that we can use. And, and we want to get to the point where we can give this to somebody to get in more, more design. So. Now, now another, Bowman. another benefit I, I would suggest is the fact that doing it this way, uh, I would, if we choose the right hydrologist to do it, we can go ahead and just say that your, your job is to tell, it if, tell us if it's feasible, give us some kind of numbers on it, uh, give us an honest opinion. Uh, you're not going to design it. You're just giving us this information. Right. And it's off the table then, and then we can come back and advise the board. Good job. Uh, Mr. Dalton. Yeah, I think that what the goal is is just to develop a concise scope of work to identify what you're asking for, time of delivery, and that kind of thing. As Bill said, there may be, and I think, um, you know, Chairman Stacey and I said, too, there may be some other information, um, previous information hydraulics have already done. But it identifies a scope of work which, you know, um, we need to do an administration and Bill can handle to make sure that we – on the right path and get what we're asking for. Appreciate that. With no further discussion. Just real quick, I know uh, for y'all, Ms. Bowman told me she still has that the feasibility study and the, the all the modeling and stuff that was done about eight years ago when they did the last bit on it to see whether or not the portal weir and she said she's willing to, to right. give that to us. And we have, as well. yeah, I, I, we did that, uh, with the parish did that, the drains board did the report through the Corps of Engineers, okay. and uh, we have the oh, yeah. uh, recommendations. And in fact, the recommendations of them back at, ti at the time was remove all the structures right. and go with a similar deal that we're doing on Prepare Road, a, right. a two-tier type drainage system. But anyway, we'll let the hydrologists, no. you know, and analyze and give us the results back. With no further discussion, Pass. Thank you. Bring back the report. Mm -hmm. Move on to number six. Drainage report, Mr. Rue. Yeah, I handed out our major projects, a list of updated, and uh, I'm not going to go into it. Uh, I'll be glad to answer some specific questions. I know we're in a uh, kind of a short meeting today. Uh, yeah, we because real of short. Finance. Thank you, Mr. Rue. Uh, Mr. Turner. Hey. You have no. anything? Mr. Sadley. No, I'm fine. Mr. Kluwak. Yeah, just a quick update on Law Ridge Levy extension. Yeah, we finished the, well, one comment period, we extended DNR and the core. So we're looking at a few more days before that, and then uh, the core will be sending back to GSA uh, to uh, explain some of the, or give further explanation to some of the comments that they received. And so we have to go through that process. But we right at the end of this whole comment period, and I don't foresee uh, too much longer where we'll get a firm uh, decision from the core to go forward or to change the alignment or to do whatever they think is deemed necessary. But we're right at the end of that process, and I think we can be going forward with the actual uh, permit, receiving a permit uh, in just a few months. So we're, going, we, we're working real well now. We still have project. land acquisition working on the sidelines? That is in the process now. The, the acquisition process has begun. Uh, the only th we actually going out. The GSA has sent out is sending out the surveyors to do a more exact uh, boundary survey of the properties along uh, the um, the levy, and uh, so the acquisition uh, team can come up with actual papers uh, to present to the landowners and, and go forward with it. So that's all going to go uh, toward the end of the year, uh, while we wait for the permit and final design is in, is being completed. So everything's looking pretty good on Law Ridge Levy. Yeah, just real quick, I want to thank thank y'all mm -hmm. for working on the uh, levy certification process. Mm -hmm. Good job, Mr. Sakeman. Yes, a um, couple of things, uh, Bill on Cluat Dick. The the Cluat, yes, sir, the uh, the main thing on Cluat, we get we have the profile done, we have it, most everything done to, to be able to improve it. However, the um, the main problem in the Cluat ditch is from 61 to Francois. And we uh, met with the, and one main problem with that is a pipeline. And right now it goes up to the pipeline, it goes uh, parallel with the pipeline, and that's one reason it's kind of screwed up. And we're talking with the pipeline company right now, and I think it's Shell, and they, we're going to work with them on seeing how deep it is, if we're able to go through it with some kind of floodway. 
If not, what would be the cost of lowering <coughs> the pipeline? Because that's the key to the whole. We don't want to start upstream. We want to start at Francois and work our way up. And so we're trying to work it out with the pipeline company right now. So right now it's between Francois and Airline? Yeah, that's your main problem. That's your main bottleneck. And the main reason for that is the pipeline. So we're waiting on Shell. Shell. And again, they were working with us. They're taking it uh, to their engineering. And in fact, they may even have some information already. That was last week, the last we talked to them. So and we should we have, have something this week. We've already given it over to the engineers, I think. Yeah, yes. Green yes. Point for the oh, yeah. We, the design. The only thing we're waiting on now is work on that pipeline so we can do that last, uh, the last section, which is uh, from uh, Francois to Airline. Mm -hmm. And uh, Panama Conway cross section, the survey. Panama is complete. I got it on my desk today. I've got the profile, and tomorrow I should have all of the cross sections in line. All of every uh, 200 feet, it's all going to be printed out. And with that, and you're welcome, I can meet with you, uh, Mr. Shakes and I, we can meet at the office and look at the, the complete span of that bayou and, and identify the bottlenecks. And uh, again, we have all the cross sections too. We have the profile and the cross sections we can look at. And it's really, uh, it's, it's really in good shape right now for us to identify where the actual uh, silt buildups are. And there are some that I just noticed right off the bat when I was looking at it. So, but uh, as soon as I get the cross sections, I'll give you a call. We can meet and we'll look at the, uh, the, the stuff that we have. But we have a meet for St. James tomorrow. And we may have that. We better sit down before. Okay. Uh, now, Conway is, uh, is, should be mobilized uh, within this week or, or within by next week for surveying. And they're going to do a 200 foot section, but that's done by the outside contractor. And uh, it should be complete in about 90 days. So Hopefully we'll go with the process on Panama, and by the time we get well into our process of forest uh, permitting of Panama, we should be able to have enough information to do the same thing on Conway. Okay. Did they get to clear those areas that they had the debris over there on the other side of the airport? Uh, yes, at, at a couple of locations. In fact, we, we just, uh, I, I don't know if they've mobilized yet, but we're moving one last bridge okay. uh, behind uh, the Robert property uh, and the golf course. Okay. And, um, but they did remove debris further up. And that section between the, uh, the, the airport and 44 is one of the main sections that where most of the, on that end, most right. of the silt removal gonna take place because that's where the buildup is. Right. But that's why we're out on that. Okay, thank you. Mr. Shakes, huh? thank you. Ms. Cass. You know <laughs> that this process has to slow down because you've gotten to me and the folks who are affected by the alligator bayou locks. Alleg yes. I know that uh, what I see here looks really good. However, I would like for you to kind of go through with it, with it, w it with me, uh, for the sake of folks being able to see and hear what we've accomplished thus far and what our uh, construction date appears to be. Mm -hmm. If I'm, you know, I want to read this correctly. I don't want to misinform anyone. Uh, I do want to clear up that the issues with the landowner have been resolved. Mm -hmm that we had a problem with. I see that uh, operational plans, et cetera, should have gone to the core last month. Mm -hmm. Did that happen? We talked, we had a talk with the core last month and especially had to do with, uh, you know, the procedure between, uh, on the, this is the locks themselves. Yes, sir. Uh, we had a talk, I've been talking to the core. Uh, right now, the, they should be going within another week. We had to do some revisions on it because of uh, the model that came out of uh, the latest model that they ran on it. Uh, the other issue is the, well, it's not an issue. It looks like uh, we're going to get FEMA money for uh, the coverts, uh, both the sluice Excellent. gates and the coverts, and the uh, coverts, uh, that the box coverts and also the coverts along Ridge Road. We did a full survey of Ridge Road, and we identified every crossing, and we upsized everything to a 25-year event. Um, uh, again, we're hoping to get as much as $750,000 through FEMA uh, to help buy the material. And so we're working on that end too. So that kind of changed the scenario a little bit when we went to this FEMA grant stuff because we've got to do everything a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's why we're out on that right so now. So for those folks along the ridge who are listening tonight, mm -hmm. you know Mr. Jimmy's listening. Mm -hmm. We have upsized those culverts. We have all the information, all the cost uh, estimates in on every culvert, what size everything needs to be, and um, to accommodate to a accommodate year a event. twenty-five year event. Bill, I'm very grateful okay. for that on behalf of those folks. I mean, we've, they've waited 
long and patiently, and you and I have worked on this for a number of years. So I thank you for your commitment to that community. And I'm particularly pleased to see a start date on this project. It appears to me to be October the 6th, 2015. Yes. The only thing that we need is to get a little bit more information on a FEMA uh, grant, but also the main thing is to get, we're going to run with a, a JD, a jurisdictional determination for core. I don't think we need any permits along the road itself because it's probably more of a nationwide, even though it's fairly big, it's considered a nationwide uh, permit, and I don't think we'll have much trouble with it, but we're still going to issue a JD, and that's just by itself going to take 30, to 30 <coughs> days, 45 days. Now so we're going to go that route so we don't get in some trouble or something. Okay. Anything else we need to know about this project and, and no, anything that might affect the start only, date? No, the start th the, the date should be, it's pretty solid. Um, the... Uh, the landowner at uh, uh, Frog Bayou, uh, we came out with the, the uh, estimate, with the full appraisal on it, and it's like $3,800 for that little piece of land. And the property owner really wants to donate to us so he can get some uh, preservation credits in his mitigation bank. We have we, we scheduled to have a meeting with him and his, uh, the professor that's helping him put together the plan, you know, for the Corps and their permit for enhancement. And sometime this week or early next week we'll meet on that issue but getting the land is no problem it just if we go pay for it so you can donate <coughs> it so he can get some preservation credits be working that little little bit out but that's the only issue there well, i'm pleased to see us having gone from mm -hmm. litigation and and not so great terms with this landowner to a position where he feels comfortable making a donation to the parish i think that's a a, tr a tr credit to your work your department's work i thank you for that and certainly uh, appreciate everything that you've done to move this forward. Thank okay. you so much. Go back up one, Mr. Lowell. You have anything? Um, okay. Mr. Lambert. Go ahead. Mr. Malone, come on. Um, just real quick, the, on New River, all, going all the way down, y'all are doing the shredding and cleaning out. Up right. Where are we at on that? Uh, we just about completed the, uh, I think we may have a few reaches left between 431 and Roddy Road. Uh, we got most of that done, or, or most of the sections. We're having to get in and out of it, every bridge, every crossing, so it takes a little time. Right. And the rain, you know, and other weather conditions kind of messes up. But uh, we're actually going to keep mobilizing uh, all the way down uh, New River and do the same thing. It's looking pretty good. It clings at both sides and gets a little bit more uh, area where the overtopping of the water of the, of the bayou can uh, actually get some a little bit better flow. So. So after we're done with that, we're going to continue to – do you have crew that, that's kind of going around making sure? Because I know sometimes we, we finish that and then something falls in. And we we have a regular like crew that. that goes through. We have a barge with a, a small excavator on it, and uh, and we uh, we go through and inspect, and we find something, we go and remove it. If we can't get it from land, we get it from sea. Okay. <laughs> we know we got the barge. We can go in and get it. Uh, so it's we keep we keep on it pretty uh, pretty good now. Thank you. Two more things, Mr. Rue, real quick. Mm -hmm. One, uh, Miss Mickey Ricka on uh, Coffin's Chapel did. I don't have my uh, sheet here. I don't know if Alan has it or if you have any an update on it. Did we uh, take care of the tree in uh, Henderson Bayou? Stump. Stump. Okay. But it's complete. Yeah. Uh, I don't know where I put it. Can you please check that for me? We'll get a status tomorrow okay. and check with the lady. The other thing, real quick, we'll back up. We have one speaker on the Law Ridge, uh, Miss D. To make it Benedetto. Benedetto. Beto, you wanna? Hi, I apologize. We tried to get listed on the agenda. We uh, sent an email to Miss Heather Clifton, and we've checked the website for an updated agenda. Since our community did not know that we were going to be talked about on the agenda tonight. Can we table the discussion on Laurel Ridge till we can get all of our community here next uh, drainage meeting? This was strictly an update, ma'am. What, what what do you need? Oh, well, there's several issues you, that we have. Just one issue I can think of off the top of my head is that um, the private roads, the Lake Martin property owners and corporation owns all streets, all roads, all right-of-ways. Uh, excuse me, I'm nervous. Um, common area boat launch and I heard uh, Mr. Rue talking about 
doing surveys back there. That's private property, and we have no trespassing signs. We have a lot of issues. I don't want to take your time. I just want to know if we can be put on the agenda or if you can table the discussions. We've been trying to be heard. No problem, man. Mr. Clow out here is your representative. You yeah. can get with him, and he'll take have care you, of any needs you have. What we got is the have, – have you talked to the people with uh, Mr. Ruin and with drainage? Uh, they have legal representation. Not really. Well, oh, we no, have our attorneys in contact with us, but we, we, we deem that yeah. legal representation. Well, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't represent the Lake Martin, Save Lake Martin community. Again, he's been contacting he, us. Okay, what, what can I do firm, so to get on the agenda? Get with Mr. Clue up, ma'am. Because yes. we, I mean, I assume that, that he's, in the public comment period, he said he was representing the folks back there. Well, he's our, he's our spokesman, but he's not legally representing us. But all, all contact at this point in time need to go to the Corps of Engineers. And, and uh, it's outside of our purview of the council. It's in the hands of the DNR and the Corps of Engineers. And that's why they have a public comment period. They receive all of it, and they question us uh, off of what they receive. We really have no official action that we can take. Okay, so I'll, I'll I'll understanding I'll talk it. to you, Mr. Benedetto. That when, you know, okay, because I'd like to got. speak to my council if I'm a member of Ascension Parish, which I live. I, I, I mm, think y'all are here sure. to service me, and I'm here as a good citizen. Yes, ma'am. So I'd, I'd, I'd like to talk to you without having to jump up to these governmental agencies. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. With that, we'll move on to number seven, authorization to renew and extend contract with Volker. Mr. Rue. Yeah, we seek authorization to renew and extend a contract with Volker Incorporated for engineering and other professional services on a Muddy Creek drainage improvement project. Term of contract extension is from April 2015 to April 1, uh, 2016. So moved. Second. <coughs> Mr. Malonso, second by Mr. Lambert. Discussion. None. Motion how passed. How much is that? How much is that? Sir? How much is that contract? Uh, presently, it's 77000 just for permitting. We haven't went to the next phase yet. Okay. Uh, altogether, I think it might be a hundred and additional 130000 for the okay. design. But this is just an extension of time. Uh, okay. That, that can contract, uh, it's, up for renewal for, for, it's up for renewing okay. uh, in April. I got you. So we need to renew it so we can continue okay, the process. Right. No further discussion. Motion passed. Number eight, authorization for budget amendment to increase the budget. Mr. Rue. This is uh, seek author authorization for budget amendment to increase the budget budget of fund 35.063.4041, which is capital improvement construction fund for engineering, adding 1.8 million to the existing 2015 budget for the purpose of expediting the levy accreditation project. And what that, that is, gentlemen, we put just a, a, like a, maybe $150,000 into the budget to get the thing started. Uh, HNTB has been really, really working hard on this. We have a lot of meetings with the Treasury Department and with FEMA. And it comes to find out that they can expedite everything uh, this year. If we provide the money, they can go forward with it. The main thing is that this money is going to be spent, but I, we were kind of figuring on it being spent over the next year or two. But they're going so fast with it right now. We can start sending out actual surveyors of our levies. They're actually going to do one of the things that we actually put into their contract. Actually, it's part of their contract already. We're being able to do it is the total evaluation and inspection of Marvin Bro pump station uh, to include the surge protection and, and other parts of it that may be lacking or, or having problems with. That's all included in the contract. Geotech work uh, throughout all levies to determine the stability of them. So a lot of things, again, that we were figuring on doing over the next year or so, we're pulling it back right now and doing it this year. And that's why the, uh, we want to increase the budget uh, to $1.8 million so we get most of this at least started this year, if not completed. Can Mr. Chief, ma'am. they also going to include where they recommend to in enclose the rest of the parish with levies? This is the preliminary part of just gathering data. Yeah. And, and this is all part of what they call the LAMP process, which is the levy mm -hmm. uh, anal uh, analysis and mapping uh, uh, program. <coughs> this is all necessary to get that program started so we can get that over with. And after we get all of that done, then that's when we 
uh, we're looking at uh, reevaluating the whole program to see if we get enough benefits from just being included in the LAMP, uh, LAMP uh, process, and we may not go to the full accreditation. We're going to look at the cost benefit. If it costs okay. too much to go further with the full accreditation, which is a 100% uh, 100 year flood level with free board and tying it into high points, it might be too costly. We may be able to get enough benefit just with the LAMP uh, process. But in any case, we need this all done okay. to get yeah. that part and to go forward to accreditation. Uh, again, I, uh, I, I, I tell you, the, uh, um, I have uh, high praise for HNTB, the way they, they're pushing this program and going forward with it. Okay. So a lot is being done on that process. Thank you. I move uh, yeah, moved by Mr. Lambert. Second. Second by Ms. Casa. Any further discussion on the motion? If not, motion passed. Motion adjourned. Motion adjourned by Mr. Lambert. Second. Second by Mr. Shakes. Now we adjourn.